Good morning, everyone, and happy Monday. Hello to Stephanie H, and good evening to Zoe C in the chat. And welcome, everyone, to our 11th episode of More to Explore, where we like to keep you updated with everything happening on the largest live nature network. And a happy belated Mother's Day to all the moms out there. We have some great highlights featuring moms later on. And as you may have guessed from the title of today's show, we are talking, taking a look in our own backyards in a new segment, Neighborhood Nature. Every week, Mike and I like to share the cams that we're watching uh, this week. And we want to know what cams are you watching this week? Let us know to be featured later on in the show. If you don't know me, my name is Brian Bird, and I'll be your technical director today, pushing all the buttons behind the scenes. And to teach us about the wildlife we see today is our resident naturalist, Mike Fitz. Thanks again for being here today, Mike. You're quite welcome. And, and hello, everyone, no matter where you happen to be watching from around the world, we're happy to have you all here. And for those of you who are new to Explore.org, welcome to the community and welcome back to all of our long time viewers. We're the world's largest live nature network. We have more than 180 live cameras all over the world. Brian and I are here live. So if you have comments or questions for us, please drop those in the chats. We'll be looking for them during the broadcast today. And we're looking at a hummingbird, hummingbird feeder in Laguna Niguel, California. Here we get to watch Allen's hummingbirds, uh, but also there's a possibility to see other species such as black chinned or Costa's hummingbird, Anna's hummingbirds as well, and fledglings of those species. Occasionally, occasionally we also see male and female hooded orioles visiting the feeder too, which are a treat to see just beautifully uh, <laughs> birds with some beautiful plumage. And this is also just a great example of a feeder that's easy to clean. You can see in the hummingbird juice down at the bottom, there's no dye in there, just sugar and water. That's all the hummingbirds need. Uh, so if you're looking to pick up a feeder for your backyard, this is, uh, I think, a good example of maybe the style that you're looking for. Of course, you know, we want to know about the cams that you're watching this week or looking forward to watching this week. So you can let us know about those in the comments. And we're starting the show with the hummingbird feeder because it's a great example of nature near someone's home. The webcams on explore.org, as I think everyone who watches Explore realizes, they're a, a gateway to experience nature around the world. Yet I also hope that the webcams serve another purpose. And that's really to inspire you to observe and care for wild creatures in your communities. So in our new segment, which is called Neighborhood Nature, we'll highlight some of the nature observations uh, shared by us uh, or shared with us by the Explore.org community. Uh, and to get us started, here's something that I've been paying attention to in my neighborhood recently. A cool rainy evening in April or May is weather that a lot of people avoid. It saturates clothes and footwear and can bring about hypothermia in the unprepared. But this is when the silence of winter is broken and spring takes hold. In my neighborhood of Northern Maine, the first rainy evenings in spring trigger a mass migration of frogs and salamanders, all of whom seek success in a short yet frenzied breeding season. They seek to reproduce in vernal pools, those ephemeral, shallow puddles and small ponds that fill with springtime snowmelt and rainwater. I seek the opportunity to observe and enjoy the company of some of my usually inconspicuous neighbors. When the weather is right, I head outside shortly after dusk to walk my local road. I might find a few dozen individual amphibians moving toward their breeding ponds on busy evenings. Along the way, I marvel at their determination. This can be a long journey through forest and thicket and over roads and across ditches for small frogs and salamanders. I'm fortunate to live on a quiet road, but cars and trucks are a significant hazard for animals. Since amphibians are particularly vulnerable on roads, I'm happy to lend them a hand so they don't have to play a real life game of Frogger I also count the number of amphibians I see, note their location, and submit that data to a community science project called the Main Big Night. In my community, few events signal the return of spring more than the amphibian migration. And certainly, the chorus of spring peepers is a true 
harbinger of the season. The springtime migration of my amphibian neighbors showcases their great commitment to their life tasks, and their arrival on rainy evenings signals an awakening of the landscape. So that's one thing that I've been watching in my neighborhood over the past a month and a half or so. And I look forward to the amphibian migration every year. Those evenings when I can find some of my small neighbors, they're really some of my favorite evenings of the year. We want our audience to share photos and stories of nature that you've been seeing. It could be really anything nature related. Uh, it could be wildflowers, trees, could be vertebrates, could be invertebrates. Uh, fungi, microorganisms, maybe you have a favorite river or other water body that you like to walk near or sit near and observe nature there. It could even be a spider that you love, let live in a corner of your house or your apartment. I actually have one of those above my work desk that I've been watching for um, the past, I think, month and a half or so. And right now <laughs> she is feeding on a, 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 I should take a picture of this, Brian, for the next um, neighborhood nature, but I think she's feeding on a fly right now. Uh, so yeah, please do share those things with us. We'll have a little bit more details about that in just a second, but to help us get started with that, here's a few examples from our uh, splendid CAMOPS. CAMOPS Snow uh, wrote in uh, to us and shared with us uh, about a robin's uh, nest right outside her window with at least two eggs in there. Uh, and Kim Ops Snow writes, I love that even in an urban area, you can still find wildlife all around you. And that is absolutely true. Uh, even in the densest of cities, there's definitely stuff to look at. Kim Op, uh, Quahu, uh writes here in the Sonoran Desert of Southern California, I have bird feeders and year round hummingbirds. But during the migration, uh, who in Quahu is on this Pacific Flyway, I get Cooper's Hawks as regular video visitors. And that must be quite amazing to have such a, uh, a powerful predator like a Cooper's Hawk visiting your backyard. I don't think I've ever been able to see one up close quite like that before. So that's awesome to see. Kim Op Orion would, uh, likes to say, I would like this, uh, or writes in to say, I would like to say that feeding wildlife can be a great way to bring life into your yard and can bring new opportunities to view wildlife you may not see otherwise. Just remember, that when you feed wildlife, you feed all wildlife. And that's extremely important to, to remember. Uh, you wanna feed wildlife responsibly. Like if you are putting a bird feeder out, for example, at this time of the year, if you have seeds that you're setting out for birds, you may wanna think about reducing that, uh, the, the frequency that you're doing that or taking that feeder in if you share habitat with black bears. Because uh, like a pound of sunflower seeds is thousands of digestible calories for a black bear. So to avoid some of those wildlife and human conflicts, we want to feed wildlife responsibly. Uh, so great tip there. And Cam Op um, Buell writes in and says, I love animals. I have an owl box that a dove pair took up residence in. And I currently have three hummingbird nests in my cactus. We see snakes, bald eagles, bobcats, great horned owls, and lizards. So that sounds like a very wildlife rich area. Amazing to see. And Brian, also, um, you enjoy hummingbirds in your backyard, as I understand it. Yeah. So also like, it feels like there's so much wildlife in my home alone. We have a dog, a chinchilla and a tortoise, but as far as neighborhood <laughs> wildlife goes, I did set up a, a hummingbird feeder myself. You can see here, we had little nesting material in the feeder there. So I'm super excited. I'm convinced that there was a nest somewhere in that tree behind it, but I was not able to find it this year. Hopefully, hopefully next year I'll find a nest of my own. Um, and to share their own neighborhood nature clips, how can they share it with us, Mike? Yeah, and especially thanks to all of our cam ops who shared their observations. Uh, again, we'd like you, our exploded or community, we're, community, wherever you happen to be, uh, to share some of your neighborhood nature observations with us. You can do that in the chat right now if you have them. Or if you use social media, you can tag Explore.org on Twitter or Instagram, for instance, uh, for a chance to be featured on our social media channels in uh, or in the next weekly show or the next time we have a Neighborhood Nature segment. You can find us on Twitter, for ex example, or Instagram uh, using the handle at Explore.org. There is no dot in there 
for um, those social media feeds. So we're looking forward to seeing what people submit. Definitely. And moving right along in the spirit of Mother's Day, we have a few lightning round speed round of highlight clips, including this first one where the bison calves are coming out as the season. So we have a clip of a nursing calf here in Grasslands National Park in Canada. And they're just so cute running around. Uh, next up, we have our future service dogs at ECAD, all at the at the milk bar and taking a nap <laughs> collectively. And also on the other side of the world in South Africa, we've had an amazing moment of seeing lion cubs nursing and this one just playing with mom being silly. And speaking of backyard cams, our partners at Texas Backyard Wildlife has a raccoon den. And you can see here one of the kits waking up mom who's very tired herself. And also coming up soon, uh, we have our muskox cam at the University of Alaska Fairbanks, where pretty soon we're going to be having muskox caps, which we are super excited for. So very excited for that. Happy Mother's Day again to all the moms out there. And that brings us to our next segment of Egg Watch. A lot of moms doing a lot of great things on our bird cams this spring. And we have two new uh, nests or, uh, yeah, two new nests to announce uh, during this egg watch. Uh, the first one is, I think I, I know a lot of people are very excited for, and I was tuning into this this morning, and that's the Puffin Burrow on Seal Island uh, National Wildlife Refuge off the coast of Maine. So they only lay one egg per year, but Willie and Millie are back in their uh, in their breeding burrow. We don't know exactly when this egg was laid, but incubation for Atlantic puffins usually lasts about six weeks. So we could see hatching sometime, uh, maybe near the end of June, towards the, um, the latter half of June, certainly. So this is going to be a fun cam to watch during the summer. Uh, and it's not the only camera that we have on Seal Island. We're still working to fine tune other views and to get them live for the public. So look for that. And then over in South Africa with the uh, black eagles, there are two confirmed eggs in the nest. Estimated hatch for those is maybe uh, early June. So still incubation ongoing there. Uh, as far as Canada geese at Rogers Place, uh, we were really looking forward to the hatch and watching the baby geese uh, jump from the nest into the water. Unfortunately, that camera was struck by lightning. Evidently, the birds were okay, but the cam was not. So we missed the hatch and the jump. Uh, we wish the best to that Canada geese family, no matter where they happen to be right now, because they've certainly left that nest. Uh, ospreys, three osprey nests uh, to check out uh, with the Chesapeake osprey in Maryland, three eggs there. Uh, the third one was laid on May 8. Uh, in Montana at the Charlo nest, uh, two eggs in that nest. The second one was laid on May 9. And the Audubon uh, boathouse nest in Bremen, Maine with Skiff and Dory there. Uh, three eggs on that nest. The third egg was laid on May 10. So some updates there, more eggs on the osprey nest. And all of those uh, ospreys will be incubating their eggs for about 35 to 40 days. And then hatching will begin. Finally, our newest nest, uh, to feature, and I am excited about this one. This is the common grackle. We don't know how many eggs are in this nest. This nest is on the side of a vacant bald eagle nest in Decorah, Iowa. So if you're looking to watch it, search for the Decorah North Eagle Nest on explore.org. Only females incubate eggs in this species, and not all nests are attended by males during incubation. So we may only see this bird sitting here we don't know when the eggs were laid, but the incubation period was something around, uh, or is something around 11 to 15 days. So hatching is going to be pretty soon, certainly no later than next week, and maybe even this week, uh, depending on how recently those eggs were laid. Uh, and this is a common species whose population numbers are really in a dramatic decline. Their numbers in North America, they've fallen by more than 50%, I've read between 1966 and 2019. So while there's are still millions of common grackles uh, alive today, the decline in populations really remind us that many supposedly common bird species are facing tough times and we can't sleep 
on their conservation. It's a little complicated with grackles because they can uh, cause a lot of damage to agricultural crops. And in some places they're controlled and killed for that reason. But North America is home to 3 billion fewer birds today compared to the 1970s. So there's a lot of work that we need to do. The amount of birds that we see in North America right now should not be our baseline. But finally, before we move on to um, our second part of uh, Egg Watch, I do want to thank Cam Op Spish for taking a closer look at the Decora North Nest and finding that grackle nest. So thanks to Cam Op Spish for doing that. And we do have plenty of uh, nests with hatched birds on them right now, doing their thing, getting ready to leave the, the nests eventually uh, in Decora, Iowa with the Decora eagles there. One eaglet, uh, their expected fledge in the middle of June. And really this eagle has grown tremendously just in the past couple of weeks or so. Same with the Two Harbors uh, chick that's in Channel Islands. Um, that chick hatched on April 7 and eagle, eaglets stay in the nest for about 80 days. So we're expecting a fledge middle of June for this bird as well. For peregrine falcons, we've added the Great Spirit Bluff peregrine falcons to this graphic because last week the eggs were just hatching, but there are four ISs in that nest. They begin hatching on May 8th. Chesapeake peregrines in downtown Baltimore, Maryland, four, uh, four ISs in that nest as well. And uh, young peregrine falcons stay in the nest for about 40 days. Uh, so we still have a while to go before they'll leave the nest. And finally, the great blue herons uh, on the eastern shore of Maryland. At least three chicks in the nest that I uh, that we know of. Uh, and they're going to stay in the nest for about seven to eight weeks on average. So we, maybe we could start to see the first and the oldest bird uh, fledging in late June. But if you want to see some dinosaurs, that's the place to go right now. Awesome. Thanks, Mike, for that update for Eggwatch. And that brings us to our next segment of celebrating this week's Fan Cam Friday winners. Congratulations to this week's winners. If you would like to participate in Fan Cam Friday, all you need to do is take a snapshot by clicking the camera icon above any live cam and then save it to the gallery. Be sure to help us find future winners by favoriting snapshots. And congrats again to all of the winners. And I don't know if maybe you don't know, if you are a winner of Fan Cam Friday, you get a personalized explore.org mug with your snapshot on it. So We'd like to thank everyone for submitting their mug shots uh, this week, uh, featuring Li Marge and Billy Jackyard 45. Thanks again for participating in Fan Cam Friday and congratulations on your wins. So if you'd like to submit your mug shots to us to be featured on a future show, you can either tag us at explore.org on Instagram and Twitter, or email us at feedback at explore.org. And coming up this week, we have our live schedule is full all week, including tomorrow morning, we have the AFCAM show. If you feel like going on a virtual live safari from the comfort of your home tomorrow at 7 a.m. Pacific. And then Mike, you're hosting a couple of live chats this week, including one on Wednesday. Right. I'm looking forward to these. Uh, the first one is uh, Family Life of Orcas. So we're going to be talking with Paul Spong from Orca Lab 
uh, about the family life of orcas and orca culture. So that'll be a, a really fun one. Uh, 4 p.m. Pacific time, 7 p.m. Pacific on Wednesday. Awesome. And then Thursday, we actually have a double feature. Thursday morning, 7 a.m. Pacific time, we have our Wild Moment Show, giving all the best highlights of all of the cams from Africam. And then, Mike, you're hosting another one for Thursday afternoon with Audubon. That's right. Yeah. So I'm going to be uh, talking with Celeste uh, Flahaven, who is a communications uh, and outreach um, educator with uh, Project Puffin and the Seabird Institute. So we're going to be talking about the ospreys that we've been watching on our cameras in Bremen, Maine at Hog Island. And then also we're going to be talking about puffins, Atlantic puffins on Seal Island. So tune in for that. Awesome. And you can check all of those will be on the Explore live events page on explore.org. And Mike, as far as cams, you're looking forward to watching this week. What are you look checking out? You know, I'm going to be watching that grackle nest, I think, because I don't know <laughs> when the eggs were laid uh, and the hatching could happen very soon. Um, so I'm going to be checking that one out. And this is a bird that we just never had a chance to watch on Explodedorg before. Uh, they, they're a species that nest in my neighborhood, uh, but they kind of nest in some of the swampier areas. So I don't really get a good chance to observe uh, their behavior. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. And what about you? Nice. In the theme of kind of uh, neighborhood nature. I've actually been watching the the koi pond. You know, I don't have a koi pond in my backyard because I don't even have a backyard, but being able to see it, especially a, an underwater view like this is pretty special. And if you're not already following us on social media, here's where you can find us on all your favorite platforms, um, including our, our YouTube channel, Explore Live Nature Cams, where you can see our latest video which is more in-depth video of that encounter of seeing those lion cubs nurse and play with mom. And Mike, as other than following us on social media, how else can they get involved? Well, if, yeah, you can follow us, of course, on social media, but also um, if you want to volunteer with Explodedorg, we definitely have opportunities for that. So volunteer camera operators and moderators. So if you want to drive some of our cameras, there's opportunities for that. Uh, or if you feel like you can lend a helping hand to help moderate our chats and make Exploded Org uh, a community for everybody, you can do that as well. So you can, uh, if you're interested in becoming a volunteer, go to explore.org slash uh, volunteer. We're still looking for um, cam ops and, and, and volunteer um, moderators or especially moderators for our bear camps coming up um, that will be live towards the end of June. Awesome. And before we conclude, I want to also share some of the viewer picks for this week. We have Carrie Miller. Glad to see the Puffin Burrow is back on. I've been waiting. So have we. And we're excited to see the other Puffin cams probably go live later this week. And then we have April Owl. I enjoy the cams, but focus on the ones with Spring Young, watching the Falcon Osprey Eagle cams with assorted eggs and young. Also the Puffin cams, which just went live. You know, we're so excited to see all, especially the, the Eagle uh, the eaglets on Decora and Two Harbors that are growing so fast. And Debbie, do yes, I watched the Decora Eagle's Nest. Watch the Great Spirit. Awesome. Thank you so much for everyone for sharing your picks. And that is all the time that we have for this show. So thank you again, for everyone, for joining us today. And I want to give a special thank you to all of our moderators, camera operators, and of course, Mike Fitz. And in honor of Cam Op Cat, we'll end today's show on one of her favorite cams. And we'll see you again next week with more to explore. Until then, have a great week and happy exploring.